right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined all the way from Germany by Shauna Armitage. How are you doing, Shauna? I'm good. Excellent, excellent. And we're going to talk about brand today because uh, Sean is an expert in this area. And we're going to talk about why relationship marketing, why the relationship marketing funnel will drive your brand growth. So here's the thing, Shauna, for a lot of people listening, uh, the relationship marketing funnel, maybe not something everybody's heard of. Can you explain that first? Yeah, absolutely. The truth is, is that there are so many funnels out there. Every marketing company has their own funnel. I use the relationship marketing funnel because I think that the way consumers make purchases has changed. And what it really comes down to is focusing not necessarily on the buyer's journey, but on the relationship that the buyer has with the brand. So at the top of the relationship marketing funnel, we're looking at brand awareness. And this is arguably the most cult one for brands because brand awareness is tough. It takes time. It takes energy. Sometimes it takes money, but the hard truth is that you can't sell to people that don't know your brand exists. Next, we have the the conversion event. So that could be like getting a phone number or an email. It doesn't necessarily mean a sale. From there, we're at the nurturing stage, which really allows us to build that connection with the customer so we can nurture them into the sale, which ultimately mm -hmm. happens. Then we have retention and brand advocacy. But at the end of the day, it's those steps in the funnel when you really focus on them that lead to brand growth. Yeah, and it's interesting because, as you said, most people focus on the buyer journey and not so much the relationship. And let's face it, the relationship is built over multiple different uh, touch points. Absolutely. And just the way that we shop has changed where we used to Google a lot of things, right? We had problems that we knew we wanted answers to. It's not necessarily like that anymore. Sometimes you discover a brand on TikTok or on Instagram or via advertising. And just the way that we discover new brands and new ideas have changed. So the funnel needs to change along with it. Yeah, no, no, abs absolutely. And and it's really interesting that you say that, that, yeah, the way that we discover brands is so very, very different today than it was. And, and to your point, they can pop up from anywhere. Uh, and I guess the hard part then for you as a brand is to figure out, okay, where where's your target audience? Yeah, I mean, everybody has to consider that. And they're likely not just in, in one place. Mm -hmm. So you need to figure out where to go and how to show up in a way that's going to attract them to you, both organic and paid. I think that's really important in terms of brand awareness that we're not just solely relying on organic to grow our brands. And do you think, I mean, has it been surprising for some of the clients in that that you've worked with? Has, have they been surprised by where their customers are hanging out? Yeah, for sure. And every, every brand has a, a different approach to this because mm -hmm. their end goals are different. So you really have to take that into consideration, but for sure, everybody gets a little surprised in terms of where their customers are hanging out. And I think the one thing that surprises them most is that the biggest brand awareness for the best price seems to be with brand partnerships right now, when you are partnering up for the win-win situation with another brand and leveraging one another's audiences. Yeah. So t talk to a little bit more about that. Talk about uh, how you can leverage brand partnerships. So brand partnerships are so big right now, especially for smaller brands or brands that don't have a lot of money to dump into advertising. It really, when you, when you start advertising, it is an investment. You have to test different things and it's not always going to work. You might lose money on that and you have to be okay with it. For some brands, it's just not realistic. So when we're looking at brand partnerships, we are looking usually at a brand that has synergy with our brand, mm -hmm. not necessarily a competitor, but they're serving the same audience that we do, maybe in a different way. We could share values like sustainability right. or a women-led brand, something like that. 
And we find ways to cross promote or to leverage one another's audiences by maybe something to an email list or a special event that you're running or an Instagram story. Lots of different ways to do it. And how would uh, how would people go about establishing these kind of partnerships? Because as I said, I mean, to many people, maybe they haven't thought about doing this and that's, they hear, wow, that sounds like an interesting idea. But how do you go about establishing these kind of partnerships? Research. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know that's not like probably the easy answer that you wanted it to be, but just uh, I don't I don't like I don't like giving people easy answers because I don't believe there is easy <laughs> answers to most things. <laughs> Yeah, research, a quick Google search um, based on maybe some some uh, keywords that are relevant to your brand could pop them up. Uh, even on Instagram, there's that little uh, arrow that clicks down and it will tell you similar accounts. So that mm -hmm. might be a good place to start researching. And I guess before you start, you have to figure out what, uh, you know, what is your value proposition to whoever you're reaching out to? That's big because if you're just reaching out to a brand and you're like, hey, I have this great thing, you should share it with your audience. We'll give you a free coupon code. We'll give you mm -hmm. free stuff. Nobody wants that. They don't just want to promote what you've got to their audience, right? So whether it is an influencer or another brand, you have to find that in where you can make it a win-win situation for everyone. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. And what are some of the best? Uh, what are some of the best examples you've seen of this? I mean, you don't have to name company names, but what are some of the best examples you've seen of good partnerships, brand partnerships? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I work with a CPG brand right now, where to build their food product, they mm -hmm. work with other food companies uh, for for the high quality ingredients. So we've done cross promotion with some of these other food companies. And another thing that we have done, or we're starting to do right now, is we are looking for just brands that are different. We do a lot of our grocery shopping or our shopping at the grocery store. And even with the pandemic, that has changed. So a lot of these smaller brands have really indulged in e-commerce in the past mm -hmm. year. So other brands who are doing the same thing, really working on building up their email list, looking for those brands that that have something unique also to offer and finding ways that we can share those offers with one another's audiences. And it seems like a great way also of kind of building out an ecosystem around yourself and 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 people, you know, where there's mutual benefits to to strategize and to share ideas. Yeah, I mean, it's very cliche, the whole, you know, your network is your net worth kind mm -hmm. of thing. And, and we think about that, I think, in the corporate world, but we don't necessarily think about that as entrepreneurs and business owners enough, where we always want to be connected to, to great people, but we don't think about the brands that we could be connected to mm -hmm. and how we can all lift one another up. So really building those connections and those relationships is going to be important, especially in terms of organic growth. Yeah, and I just wanted to underline because I think that's a really important point that you just made there. Because I, I do think we always think about connecting with people and you know, influencers and personalities and, and people who are high up in particular companies or whatever, but we don't always yeah. think about connecting with the brand. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, there's a human behind that brand. So yeah. it really is, you know, person to person connection at the end of the day. But yeah, we're so focused a lot of times on influencers to promote our things that we forget that brands have a, their own circle of influence. And even it might not be reflected in tens of thousands of followers mm -hmm. on Instagram, but you'd never know how many people are on their email list or how many people they're shipping to every month, right? You could do something creative, like put a coupon or a teaser product in one of their boxes that they're shipping wow. out. There's lots of ways to create that connection and do something fun and unique together. And you just, you don't understand a brand's influence just by their, their social media following. No, absolutely. So what are some of the other things that, that maybe marketing teams are, are, are forgetting to do in terms of building those relationships with the brand? Are there things that many people are overlooking? I think the biggest thing is just that making sure it's a win-win because it's so easy to say, I have this thing, I want to give you a coupon code, let's cross promote. Mm. 
I think that we're not spending enough time getting to know each other, brainstorming together, finding creative ways that we can work together. You know, so much business has gone online. We don't necessarily want to limit ourselves to digital marketing. Mm -hmm. There's other things that you can do that are outside the box that aren't writing blogs and, you know, posting on social media and swapping content. And when you just take the time to step back and find new ways that you can work together, I think that is what's truly valuable and really helps you stand out. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that because I think a lot of those other tactics, while they were new, obviously at one time, not that long ago, mm -hmm. they've now become pretty overused and, and, and worn out. And what about from a, from a point of view of just building the brand generally when you get a customer or when you get somebody on that like building that relationship with the customer? Well, that's all about retention and brand advocacy, right? We want to move people mm -hmm. down the funnel, A, so they are purchasing again. They should never mm -hmm. just purchase one time. So right. whether that means having varied product offerings, running sales, or simply giving them a reason to, to shop by communicating with them. Or... Um, you know, and, th and then the next one is, is the brand advocacy piece because word of mouth is not dead as much as I'm all about digital marketing and mm -hmm. we do so much things online, people turned to other people in their circles for advice. And when you have your customers who are telling other people about you, that's free brand awareness right now. And that's the hardest piece of the marketing funnel. So when you work really hard to, to build that relationship, show them that you share values, that you value them as a person, not just, you know, an invoice paid, that really goes a long way to getting your customers to start spreading the word and doing the selling for you. Yeah, because I think because I think it's it's really interesting because I think sometimes um people don't you know they don't like to engage that much with their customers when they don't have to right it's like the customer seems happy they've given me whatever i want therefore i'm just going to back off and leave them because i don't want to rock the boat but i mean that's missing out on huge opportunities for developing that relationship and as you said for the trying to get them towards advocacy Business should never be purely transactional. It just shouldn't. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we go that extra mile to make the customer feel valued, to make them feel heard, to make them feel seen, that is really a relationship builder. So not only do they purchase from you again, but they're getting other people to purchase from you as well. Yeah. And, and like I said, it's not, but that has to be done consistently, as you say, it has to be done consistently over a quite a long period of time because you have to build that trust if somebody's going to advocate on your behalf like it's one thing to have i mean this kind of levels is one thing to have a satisfied customer great uh it's one you know a happy customer cool but one that will actually talk about you without even being asked to talk about you is the one exactly. you really want to get to and that takes work and it takes a strategy right it does. It definitely takes a strategy. And I think that, I mean, we've all had this experience, right? Where mm -hmm. you open up an email and, and you don't know who it's from. And it says on the bottom, you know, you're on this list because you subscribed mm -hmm. to this thing. But that was what, like six months, 12 months ago. And yeah. you just hit delete. You don't even remember why you were on the list in the first place. Mm -hmm. And that happens way too often because brands are not investing any energy into building some kind of communication strategy. So even if it's just a little check-in once a month, you know, the cadence doesn't have to be every day or every week if that's not something that feels good for mm. you and your customer, but you do have to have a touch point. And, you know, in marketing, we talk about just giving value, giving value. Sometimes mm. the most valuable thing that you can do is, is just say hello. And that really does make the customer feel seen and feel heard, even if it's not the right time to purchase. And that's the thing, nobody wants to get communication just to be sold to, you know, I don't, mm. the only time you're showing up in my inbox is when you want me to purchase something, you're not going to have my full attention.
No, and that's and unfortunately that's pretty typical, isn't it? Like the um, you know you have a, a flurry of initial conversations and contact, and then the, the customer purchases, and then the next time they hear from you is a month before their renewal. Yeah, or you know when do you get the most emails? Right, like on Black Friday or mm -hmm. right before Mother's Day or for the Memorial Day sales. Like you, you can go through every month of the year and you know exactly when you're going to have a ton of emails in in your inbox so what about communicating with them or talking to them outside of those days mm -hmm. so when you do have something that you want them to pay attention to yours is the first message that they open yeah and, and i think that's an i think that's an incredibly important piece of advice and something that everybody who's listening or watching could implement immediately and that is a little bit more randomness in your communication and as you said uh, you know not reaching out to sell reaching out doing doing something um the check-in or just a, a piece of valuable information or con whatever it is but i think the i think when we get a random outreach it catches our attention as opposed to the rote ones as you said that are coming on particular occasions yeah, absolutely. My husband and I joke about that. We're not ones that uh, that celebrate Valentine's Day, which is, mm -hmm. you know, very strange to most couples. But it, it feels so much more special to me if he brings flowers home because it's a Tuesday than because it's Valentine's Day. Those are the kinds of things that I remember. And the same principle can go into your marketing. Like, don't just mm -hmm. be doing things because you're supposed to do it or that's the time of year when people do sales open up those lines of communication because it's tuesday yeah no i think that's a great idea although i might have to edit that bit out because now you just everybody who's got a significant other the significant other is going to be going hang on a second when's the last time they brought me flowers on a random day for no reason <laughs> No, I'm joking. I'm not going to edit that out. But it's a good, it's a great piece of advice. But I mean, it is a great piece of marketing advice, though, that thing about, you know, su surprise your customers in a good way, because let's face it, we love good surprises, and we rarely get them. And even if it is only a, the surprise is only, like, in the form of a digital flower that you get, like, out of the blue, it's still, it, it's going to register more than the expected, uh, you know, outreach that you get normally. Yeah, absolutely. And you also don't want to train your customers to only purchase from you when a sale is going on. So if that's yeah. the only time that that you're communicating with them, then they're probably just waiting <laughs> for the mm. next event to come up. You know, there there's definitely other other times and other messages to be shared and really focusing on building that relationship should be the number one priority of brands today. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, Shona, this has been great. Such fantastic advice and very simple, straightforward advice that everybody can implement. All of Shona's information is going to be below the video. But before we go, Shona, do please tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Sure. Um, I'm a fractional marketing director for early stage startups. If you've never heard of that before, don't worry, you are not alone. Um, I come in and work with new companies on figuring out what their marketing strategy is going to be based on their goals, based on their resources, based on their budget, and help them execute it so they can get processes in place that work and help them achieve scalable growth. And I'm also the host of the Startup Renegades podcast, where I talk to founders about what they have done to grow their businesses. Fantastic. Well, listen, Shauna, thank you very much again. Thank you all for listening or watching, and I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.